John thirteen thirteen, Humes phoneteme ha didaskalos kai ha kurios kai kalos legete emigar. Interestingly, I just thought about uh, here. So here we have the sentence ending with gar because remember gar always jumps second in a clause or sentence. Are we expected to jump second in the clause or sentence? Uh, and that seems a little odd, doesn't it, in us to end a sentence with gar? But in fact, um, the best manuscripts of the Gospel of Mark end at Mark sixteen eight, and the the last word is gar. You can see it there in Codex Sinaiticus. You can Google Codex Sinaiticus.org and look up Mark sixteen eight, and you see there's plenty of room to write other stuff. But the last word in the sentence is gar. In fact, there have been some dissertations done looking at other ancient Greek literary works that end with the word gar, and there are several, if I remember correctly. Okay, a little bit of a sidetrack there. Let's get translating. So, you all, here Jesus is speaking to the disciples. Notice that second person, plural personal pronoun, which we reviewed in the last lesson. You all are calling me, and then we have these nominatives of address. You might have expected here the vocative, like kurie or didaskale, with the vocative, the masculine singular vocative ending, but the the nominative form with the article, it almost always occurs with the article, can also be used as a nominative of address, like a vocative. So, you all are calling me teacher and Lord. And Jesus says, and uh, <laughs> rightly you are saying, in other words, you, it's right for you, you all, to, to do this. You're, you're speaking rightly. I think that would be probably a good way to render it. You are speaking rightly in calling me teacher and Lord. For, Jesus says, I am. In other words, I am your teacher and Lord. So it is right for you to call me teacher and Lord. 